when I was falling asleep last night, I felt, this is going to sound insane, but hi, it's me. I swear I felt like a demon <laughs> spoon me. In this video, we're going to be talking about why Gabby Hanna needs therapy, and you probably do too. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So real quick, yeah, we're gonna be talking about Gabby Hanna today. We're gonna be talking about therapy. We're gonna be talking about anxiety. We're gonna be talking about all sorts of amazing stuff. But real quick note, for all of you who are on my free email list. I just literally sent out an email this morning about three tips for people who cannot afford therapy and it's alternatives to that. So while I, I do push therapy and say you guys should do therapy, like I know it is not affordable for everybody. So make sure that you go check out that email. I will be linking it down in the description as well as in the comment section. I always post it in the community tab too, but you should be signed up anyways because whenever I see consistent topics coming up, in the comment section or in the Discord server or on Twitter or whatever it is, I try to write emails to kind of address it as a whole. So make sure that you go check that email out, all right? So anyways, how I was introduced to Gabby Hanna. What's interesting is, is like, what is a grown man like myself watching all of Gabby Hanna's vlogs during Vlogmas? Like, what am I doing? But <laughs> no, seriously though, um, she's awesome. A lot of you, like since my channel's been growing, a lot of you have recommended her, said that she talks a lot about mental health. I had a lot of people ask me to do a review of her song, Monster, which has now been memed <laughs> um, when that first came out. I'm always, I'm always like scared to do song reviews because I've done some in the past and like, that, that like music organization or whatever has taken them down. So I hate doing that. I hate like putting all this effort in and there's some tricks to do it. I need to figure it out. Anyways, Gabby Hanna is awesome. She talks a lot about mental health and therapy and all that. And some surprising news. I commented on one of her vlogs the other day and she actually said, said this, she replied. She said she likes my videos. <laughs> what? That's crazy. But anyways, Gabby, if you're watching this, seriously girl, call me. Well, don't call me, you don't have my phone number. But shoot me a DM on Twitter or uh, Instagram and let's do a mental health collab, girl. Let's do this thing. But yeah, anyways, um, I've been watching her vlog because she was talking about um, some of her anxiety recently and how she set up a therapy appointment. So I've been kind of waiting to hear how her therapy appointment appointment went. So what I want to do is just pull some clips from this video and talk about, you know, what all of you can learn from her experience when it comes to your own mental health. I'm going back to therapy. I haven't been for a few weeks because I haven't needed it as much. So I don't go weekly anymore. I kind of just go when I start feeling like I need it. I really like this right here because a lot of people think that you're gonna have to be in therapy forever or it's gonna be like, you know, all the time or whatever it is. But like Gabby's saying, like with a lot of our mental health, like it's, it's you know, on as you need it basis, all right? Usually in the beginning, like if you are just in a terrible mental health space, like you need to like really be entrenched in it, all right? And just keep going. But like Gabby mentioned, it's kind of like maintenance. Now, here is a cautionary tale I will tell all of you is that, you have to really be self-aware and you have to be honest with yourself. A mistake that I see a lot of my clients make is that therapy's working or even their medication's working and they're feeling great. They're like, oh, I don't need this anymore, right? And then they stop and then next thing you know, they are just mentally unwell again, right? So like be honest with yourself and just realize that sometimes the reason you feel so good is because therapy is actually working and you should keep doing it. Something I keep trying to teach all of you, all of you out there is to be proactive about your mental health. Like do not be reactionary to your mental health. Don't only work on your mental health when things go crazy, when things go bad, when you get to a really, really, really bad place. I always make the analogy of of, it's like fire drills. You don't only practice a fire drill when there's a fire happening, all right? Like therapy, meditation, all these things are things that you should be doing to be proactive so you're in a better position when these mental health issues happen. Maya, my cat is freaking out right now. I'm just feeling it so much physically. I talked about it at the beginning of the Vlogmas, but like my heart actually feels like it's in a vice and 
pounding. Like I keep taking my heart rate because I'm afraid I'm having a heart attack. So right there, right there, Gabby, if you see this girl, go see a freaking doctor for the love of God. <laughs> All right, like, especially with heart, like I, I'm somebody who had congestive heart failure as a result of my addiction. So I don't play around with health issues anymore. But anyways, what I'm curious about with Gabby, but, um, but I also recommend to all of you, like when you see a doctor, like talk about anxiety medications. So those of you who know, I'm an addict and alcoholic in recovery. So I don't, I don't really like, you know, benzodiazepines like Xanax or Valium or anything, but you know, anti-anxiety medications that have worked for me personally have been Lexapro, Prozac and things like that. So those are non-addictive. All right. Hey, Maya. But yeah, especially if you're you're experiencing like heart issues, a lot of physical symptoms because of your anxiety or panic, like make sure that you talk to a physician, okay? Therapists cannot prescribe medications. Some of your physicians can. Uh, it's always recommended to see a psychiatrist, but sometimes it takes forever to go see a psychiatrist, especially if it's your first appointment. Me, I personally just talk to my primary care doctor about this stuff. I like my therapist a lot. It's weird though, because I, I don't know. Cause you wanna think like, oh, my therapist cares about me. And I genuinely think this one does. My last one, I don't know if you really did. This one, I th I think he actually like cares. This is, a, this is a funny one right here. Like, do therapists actually care? It's really interesting. I know K Katie Morton has addressed this a few times on her channel. And those of you who don't know, I'm not a therapist. It's so funny. I always crack up when people are like, what's, what's this guy's credentials? <laughs> I'm just a guy who works in mental health. <laughs> That's what I do. Um, but anyways, like, I'll, yes and no. It's almost like, does your teacher actually care? With any profession, does your doctor actually care? There's gonna be people who care, there's gonna be people who started out caring and now they're burnt out and they need to like reignite their passion and all of that. But there's a lot of burnout when it comes to mental health care, especially, um, you know, therapy, addiction treatment and all of that because it's really, it's really difficult when you see a lot of people suffering and that like part of your job is that. So that's one of the reasons why I am keeping, you know, this thing under control as much as possible and always working on my mental health because if this thing isn't stable, I can't help anybody and it can destroy my mental health. But yeah, a lot of people care. Like what's always interesting, like what, what you should do is, I, I think it's a great question to ask your therapist or doctor or psychologist or even your teacher, whoever it is, like ask them why they got into it. Like, why did you choose this career path? Because I love, I love hearing those stories because it helps people get back down to the root of, you know, typically it's because they wanted to help people in some way, shape or form. You can even ask like a construction worker why they got into it. And a lot of them have really interesting stories about how they wanted to help people. And real quick tip about how to not hate your job is to constantly remind yourself why you got in that profession in the first place my anxiety was really high that's the thing about therapy is sometimes like right after um you feel almost like a little bit worse because <laughs> all the stuff that you're really really pushing down and trying to ignore all week you're bringing it all to the surface this is great because it's so real and any of you who have ever been to therapy or like treatment or anything like that like yeah like when you first do it it hurts it sucks, all right? But one of the most cliche sayings, which is so true, is that in order to heal, you have to feel, all right? One of the reasons why so many of us get so messed up and why I tell you to be proactive about your mental health is because so many people just let it go for so long, so long like, oh, I don't wanna feel this, I don't wanna think about this, so I'm gonna go buy these things, I'm gonna go sleep with that person, I'm gonna go drink this, I'm gonna go snort this, I'm gonna go, you know, whatever it is, right? We have all these unhealthy coping mechanisms, right? So, because we're trying not to feel those things, right? This is why I'm such a huge advocate of meditation. Meditation allows me to turn towards these emotions and embrace them. Like, I cannot explain to you how liberating it is to not be afraid of my thoughts or emotions anymore. But yeah, that's where therapy comes in because you have like a guide, you have somebody there to guide you through these emotions, all right? So yeah, it's going to be painful at first, but it's worth it. It's almost like if you had to clean out a wound, it's gonna really hurt, but you're disinfecting that sucker. I'm talking about it and really focusing on the problems. Um, so sometimes right after you're a little bit like, yeah, Gabby, if you keep uh, going to therapy and all you're doing is talking about the problems, come on over to the rewired soul where we talk about the solution. One thing I can say about myself is if you try to hate on me or hurt me in some way, I will monetize it.
shamelessly. This clip is a little off topic, but kind of not, but I just want to say, you go girl. You go girl. Like, I absolutely love how she is leaning into this monster meme. And what she said right there, she's like, I'm gonna monetize that. Like, absolutely. So I'm not saying like, for all of you watching this, like go monetize, you know, everything. Like if you can, go for it. But um, real quick, shameless book plug, my new book, Rewire Your Anger. One of the sections is dedicated to that. Like. One of the best things you could do for your mental health is to take the emotions that you're feeling and turn it into something positive, right? So like Gabby, for example, a lot of YouTubers, part of their mental health issues is because of the hate they receive online. But when you lean into that, when you lean into that and you could turn it into something beneficial, booyah, right? Like for example, with me, I turn my past, I turn my, my antics, my, you know, terrible things that I've done, I've turned that into something useful where I can help others and I talk about it, I laugh about it because I'm not that person anymore. And one of the things that I still need to make a video on is, you know, laughing about your mental health or your mental illness. Like that is a coping mechanism that people like me use, but it, for me, it's specifically to not give it so much power and control over my life. I get comfortable and then it's like, okay, what's next? Like, it's time It's time to go further. It's time to do more. And then it literally like shakes me up by like pushing me. It's, it's so hard to explain, but it's like I get to a place where I'm comfortable and then like the anxiety hits. This is an interesting part. And I've done some videos about spirituality, religion, beliefs, and everything like that. And what I want you to take from that clip of Gabby Hanna right there is, I, if, if you're not religious, if you're not spiritual, if you don't think that, you know, there's a meaning or purpose behind certain things that happen or whatever, what I would say is look at your emotions, identify your emotions and look at those as a call to action. All right. For example, the feeling of guilt is a call to action to do something, right? To be a better person, to maybe apologize. Okay. Like, for example, me, I start to get really restless and I turn, I look at that as a call to action to go help people, to do things for others. Like if I'm feeling restless, I'm like, I need to do a video or send out an email or maybe I just talk to one of you in a DM, just like, I need to do something. Like there's so many people who are like, what's my meaning, what's my purpose? And when you're looking at your emotions, your feelings and all of this, like as a way to do something to better this world, like your life is going to be a lot better. So I'm glad that Gabby touched on this and I'm excited to see what her project is, but you know, she's seeing like there's there's more to this thing. I'm I'm thinking about writing a mental health book for YouTubers specifically, but I think that's where a lot of YouTubers struggle with their mental health is because you know, their their value system is just really empty. They're not trying to help people. They're not trying to, they're just trying to, you know, get more subscribers, more viewers, more money, da, 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 and that'll be a section in that book if I decide to write it. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm going to uh, keep up with my weekly therapy appointments now. I'm not going, because I was kind of on my need to go basis, but right now I think that it's probably good that I go back uh, frequently and weekly until I kind of get my feet grounded again and give myself a little bit of consistency. Last but not least, uh, right here, Gabby talks about how she's gonna keep going back to therapy. And this is important, again, like going back to what I said at the beginning of this video, like you need to be very mindful, very honest, and very self-aware about your mental health. The way I can relate to this, okay, is from my, my, um, substance abuse recovery. So when I first got clean, I was just in 12 step meetings all the time. I was going to two, three meetings a day. Like I was hustling, right? And I was very mindful, like, you know, a lot of people are afraid to go to, you know, 12 step meetings. Like, oh, I'm gonna have to do this forever. I'm gonna da da da. No, like, it, it, it's all about where you're at in your recovery. So as I got better, when I wasn't obsessing about getting high or drunk anymore, I kind of weaned off the meeting. So instead of going like three times a day, seven days a week, I would only go like three times a week or sometimes once a week. And things kind of started to calm down. But a few years ago, my grandma, um, was put in hospice and they said that she only had um, maybe a month, maybe a few months to live. And that's when my mental health got really screwed up. So I was mindful of that and I dove back into 12 step meetings. I needed support, I needed people around me. So I started going every day again. I started going every single day again because I was mentally screwed up. And you know, I got through my grieving process, you know, I got to process everything and I got out of it. And you know, then I started slowing back down on the meetings again. So what Gabby's saying and what I'm trying to tell you too is, 
Just be mindful and aware of where your mental health is at and what you need to do to keep it in check. But anyways, anyways, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know down in the comments below what you do, what you do to be proactive about your mental health. And maybe it's just watching mental health YouTube videos like this one. I don't know, but let's have a conversation down in the comments below. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for you with this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And again, Gabby Hanna, if you're watching this, shoot me a DM. Let's do a collab sometime. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time.